Hi everyone, my name is Pierre Empelet, otherwise known as Pamboy, and this is the Gentleman Society podcast. This series highlights talents we admire because they shape culture and inspire us to strive for passion, but also for positive impact on others. We meet very different forward-thinking personalities who all convey values of care, openness, and elegance. They are the true gentlemen of our modern world. I'm joined today by a self-made British artist whose many skills beyond kindness and humbleness, inspire us all. He's an actor, and first and foremost, a singer who entirely composes his own music. A talented multi-instrumentalist whose melodies are soulful and whose lyrics are poignant. His poetic 2015 album, entitled At Least For Now, earned him the prestigious Mercury Prize. Now in his 30s, he's working on a new album, and his story is a reminder that we should never give up on our dreams. Today's guest is Benjamin Clementine. What's a gentleman according to you? A gentleman obviously means that a man of good social position, one of wealth and leisure. Um, the idea of a gentleman as grown up has always been printed in, into our subconscious. My father, for example, he was like a very diplomatic, you know, like very... Um, as I'm now older, I think it's more about being honorable, being honest, and and being true to yourself. Hopefully, I hope, there are some gentlemen out there who are not quick to judge, are more understandable, more consistently... Um, uh, patient uh, and more I suppose forgiven right what's your vision of masculinity I think the qualities or attributes regarded as characteristics of a man um, should be based in respect and once we as men gentlemen put respect as our first go-to exercise. Because remember, we're, we're not perfect. We're humans, yeah. right? So we're always going to make mistakes. And that's part of the beauty of life. But when we are able to realize and actually do in accordance to what we suppose don't want to be done to ourselves, then I think there will be an advancement and there will be more regard and in fact respect uh, given to, to to masculinity because clearly that's I think that's the reason why it's collapsing greatly completely and I think respect is an honorable thing which leads me to my next question um, how do you define honor um, and what does it mean to you to be true to yourselves honor is is, is thrown around a bit like um, uh, the word genius you see anyone can be a genius you know, these days, right? Anyone can be honorable these days. But again, it's about avoiding the taint of dishonesty. Um, you, you have principles as a man and you live by it. But again, we go back to, you know, being true to yourself, being authentic. I'm honored to be sitting here, you know, being asked these very important questions than, you know, go to another place where, I, you know, they're talking about my shoes. Right. You know? So we'll like, get to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 yeah, yeah, but you know, like, I, I, I would rather, I want everything. I don't, I don't just want just like you know the the vanity part of of it, you know, because like, at the end of the day, we're all humans, right? So we've right. got to tap into our humanity at some point. What's your motto in life? My motto in life is practice perfect patience. Unfortunately, you can never perfect your patience, but. You can't get there if you don't practice. Why do I say patience? Here's the thing. When an artist goes on stage, a music, musical artist goes on stage and they're performing, they're actually not performing. They're showing their brilliance at patience. Right. Their brilliance of being able to practice patience. You practice for hours and hours and hours. So that's my motto. Practice perfect patience. Do you think perfection is a, 
can be attained? I think it's all about perspectives, right? So for me, I think I can get there. I'm not there yet, but I think I can. But it's only solely from here and my journey. And the journey is not to be perfect, by the way. The journey is, as you're going there, how you adapt, how you hopefully, um, what's the word, simply adapt it. The more simple it is, the more your, I suppose, uh, your ability is more refined. You know, that's the journey. And, uh, you know, and as you go along, you realize that certain things that, you know, different doors, right? And you're shocked by the doors that are you've, you've found and are opening. Things that I never thought that I would be a musician, for example. Like, what, musician? Like, that's, that's, that's uh, uh, Michael Jackson. You know, that's, that's Miles Davis, you know, the musician. You know, I just came to Paris, you know? Just came to Paris because I said, okay, why not? Why not go to Paris and see what happens? You know, so, so the, the you know, perfection is, is more of a, a perspective. What would you say to a younger self? I would say that if I was talking to him right now, I'd say that you did a great job. Um, you could have practiced more. You could have practiced your patience more, but you did enough to not fall into the unknown, a place where a lot of young people fall into when they are disproportionately uh, not given enough opportunities, you see. Right. Um, so then you start to build, as a youngster, you start to build a character of, of uh, blame. You see, I would like to thank my young self for not falling into, falling into that trap and just being like really headstrong, not in the sense that stubborn, but rather like just like, just kept going, although I didn't actually know where I was going. Right. So I would say thank you. You're a skilled musician. Thank um, you. I don't think so, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think so? No, no, I don't think so. Why? I've, I've seen a lot of perfection, right? Perfection, that thing. Yeah, a lot of musicians are much, much greater and, and skillful. Who do you listen to and you're completely um, inspired and, and in awe? I've actually found this great like band. Well, they're based in London now, but they're from like um, different parts of Africa, like West Africa, East Africa, They're called Kokoroko. They're incredible. Like, and this is the kind of music that I, I didn't grow up listening to, you see, which is quite obviously ironic. <laughs> and and I, as I said, you know, when I was talking about the subconscious thing, you know, like there are things in us that like, what I know that when I play music, sometimes it sounds like, you know, the ancestors, right. you know, because like the, the voice is, You know, but I didn't. I didn't practice that. And I guess that's the reason why I'm saying I'm not skillful. You see, um, because half the things I I've recorded came naturally. Um, what were you listening to when you were younger, like a teen? Classical, classical music. That, that, that wasn't because I wanted to. Uh, it was more to do with the fact that you know I'm from a very religious family. And they didn't tolerate it. anything that had to do with the devil, devil music, right. which is pop music. So I thought that, oh, why not? Why not just listen to classical music? Because there's, there's no one singing. Or, well, they understood Pavarotti. Well, they heard Pavarotti, but they didn't know what he was saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that's that's. I listened to a lot of classical music, and that helped me a lot. Yeah. Um, you're working on a new album now. Mm -hmm. um, what's the what's the number one step? Is there like a Uh, a moment that is just like an impulse and, and creativity to start. When you start working on a new musical project, what's step one? Uh, it depends on, on the song. But um, for the past three years, 
I've moved into a new place in how I make music uh, because now I'm more of like a producer, uh, musical artist, you know. So I've spent three years in a COVID, COVID-esque uh, uh, society. So I've had a lot of time to learn about musical engineering. Um, so I know almost every compressor or every equalizer, every preamp to every desk. I had fortune to, to be able to amass those equipments. So I've got a lot of uh, hardware analog equipments. And what I've done is this time around experiment with the analog gears before I write a song. But that can lead you to, to nowhere sometimes <laughs> and make you waste a lot of time, even if it's enjoyable. Um, I only just started, the, the album's coming out. I started writing it like seven years ago. The thing about me with writing music, uh, I don't have a, like, there is no structure until there's structure. Right. You see, so some of the stuff that I've written in some of the songs that I'm coming out now, I wrote it when I was in Paris 10 years ago. Right. Right. But I didn't use that for anything because it wasn't the right time. Some, sometimes I allow myself to to let the music flow, you know, because once there's too much of, 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 of a conservative, uh, uh, you know, which is needed sometimes, you know. It depends on the song, but sometimes it, it naturally just like flows, you know, and, and you, you shouldn't stop that. Um, what's your first fashion or style memory well it's a lot of them it's a lot of them like i'll pick two the first is my brother's present given to him at christmas it was a tracksuit but it was so colorful and i felt so upset that i didn't get that present so i stole that i st- i'll steal it i'll steal, <laughs> I'll steal this tracksuit and i'll just wear it around our neighborhood. That's the first one. The second one, it's around the same time, my father hated us wearing jogging buttons because he thought that the police will stop us if we wore those, that kind of clothes. Um, and that has kind of psychologically kind of affected me a little bit, you know, like if we go to the shop as we got older, like I'm talking about, well, not older, but like 15, you know, we'll get a little bit of money and then we'll go to the market to buy sport clothes, right? And we will hide it because if he, fi- if he finds those clothes, he will cut them to pieces. See, he wanted us to wear suits. You know, he wanted us to, to wear shirts, you know, like, you know, English gentlemen. Kids in our neighbors were like, looked at us like, what the heck is wrong with these people? Why are they wearing these, these clothes? But then we got into no trouble. So now I understand my father, you know, I understand him. But at the same time, it's, it's quite sad, you know, to have the, the idea or to just to realize as, you know, as, as a father, that your children can't wear certain pieces of clothes because it's or else they'll be perceived as a certain type of person, you know. Um, I want to talk a bit about the, we talked about fashion and style, and I love the idea of memories and how they're linked to certain senses. And what does scent evoke to you? That's a good question. Because scents are powerful. When we listen to music, for me, like scent is like music, scent, same thing. Right. You know, uh, we're hearing it, but what, actually what we're doing is that we're smelling it. And it's kind of a smoky, shadowy thing that's going, come here, come here, my friend, come here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to entice you a little bit. Just come, come, come. Basically, um, scent is like that. And if, you know, if, you, if we're sad, we want to listen to a certain kind of music. If we're happy, we want to listen to a certain kind of music. If, if we're angry, we want to listen to a certain kind of music. You know, these are all scents. But hopefully, um, sense gets us to a place where we need to be. So it's all about emotions and, and feelings. So what's the what's the smell or the scent of love <laughs> to you? For me, yeah, um, the scent of love is a bit like um, burnt wood. You know, it's so rich. It's tex- texture. It's just so it's just so rich. You know, really. What about happiness? I see flowers when I see happiness. 
you know and happiness is very it's very um childish right you know um and rightly so because child deserves every bit of happiness and we all deserve happiness but when we get older we realize that we have to give happiness you know so for me happiness is is a child that's what i would say who are your real life heroes who inspires you i'd say um my kids you know the little demons <laughs> always want to make me upset <laughs> but they give me hope you know a different kind of hope i used to, i used to have a feeling of like you know no matter what i'm going to get there right that feeling you know like you know but kids it makes me even think further ahead you know all of a sudden i'm not selfish anymore right all of a sudden when i look in the mirror I'm trying to look for my son you know if i have my son with me i'm looking in the mirror i'm hardly looking at myself and that i think is such an amazing thing hopefully well who knows i hope he feels the same thing about his son <laughs> <laughs> or his daughter what's your message to the world we've ought to be careful and be forgiven forgiven we've ought to be forgiven because at the end of the day we are not perfect we are humans so it all goes back to the idea of respect that's what we need more exactly exactly i keep saying that we are not perfect i keep saying that because when someone says something sometimes they don't mean what they, most of the time they don't mean what they say as in now they actually saying indirectly i just want someone to listen to me so that and that and that's, that's respecting from both ends by the way whereas i am controlling my emotional emotional part of my brain which is very very primitive by the way and we can't get rid of that because we need that okay at the same time as i'm controlling it you are to show the respect of like you know okay this person is a human being just like me so you know working together as a unit as humans we can move forward the, the so called advancement that we want for our, uh, our the generations to come we ought to do this for it to happen or else we will never get there thank you thank you <laughs>